dear students today we will be discussing about medium and high temperature solar thermal power generation systems basically we will be discussing classification working analysis and comparison of medium and high temperature solar thermal power generation systems this concentric solar technology in short cst primarily classified into two groups concentric solar thermal and concentric solar photovoltaic further this concentric solar thermal can be classified into two major groups medium temperature and high temperature to parabolic trough and fresnel collectors are used to generate medium temperature fluid or to generate temperature required close to 400 degree celsius and high temperature can be generated by using the technology call central tower and parabolic disk so our discussion will be primarily on concentric solar thermal in this class let us see the technologies which are used for solar thermal power plant first technology is parabolic trough as you can see here there is a parabolic reflector and this is the absorber tube through which heat transfer fluid flows cold fluid enters in one section and in other section hot fluid can be collected in case of fresnel collectors solar radiation falls on the curved mirrors and then radiation is reflected to the absorber tube through which heat transfer fluid flows in the third category central tower as you can see this receiver is placed at the top of the solar tower and these are heliostats so solar radiation falls on the heliostats and from here it is reflected to the receiver okay then heat transfer fluid is employed to exchange the heat and finally this can be applied for generation of electricity and fourth category is parabolic disk as you can see this is a parabolic disk and solar radiation falls in the reflector and this is the receiver and here along with it engine is attached normally external combustion engine like stirling engine is employed here for generation of electricity so let us learn one by one and then we analyze parabolic trough and then finally we will go for competition of all those four technologies so parabolic trough how to characterize this parabolic trough as we have discussed like its temperature ranges below 400 degree c right and it's a line focusing system that means only single axis tracking is employed in this system and this concentrators are parabolic mirrors so these are parabolic mirrors and it's a linear receiver tube so tubes are linear and this system consumes water and also heat storage is possible because once we generate the hot fluid we can store in insulated vessel and then we can exchange the heat to the water and then we can generate steam to produce electricity of course for installation of this kind of technology we need flat surfaces and this system has got good receiver efficiency but low turbine efficiency so here this parabolic troughs are devices that are shaped like the letter u the troughs concentrate sunlight onto a receiver tube that is positioned along the focal line of the trough okay this is the focal line and its aperture area varies from 1 to 60 square meter 
and width is 1 to 6 meter and concentration ratio varies from 10 to 80 and rim angle is varies from 70 to 120 degree. As you can see its observer section is something like this if we cut here and then we can study. So, it looks something like this. So, heat transfer fluid flow through this inner section of the tube and you can see this is the tube and material of the tube is normally steel or copper and here what you can see this is vacuum and we will have glass cover. So, convective heat transfer is reduced that means, heat loss is reduced by providing this vacuum and this gap between these two is normally 1 to 2 centimeter. So, here you can see there is hot cold fluid entered through this tube and passed through this focal point and then what you can see is the hot fluid which is stored and we can use it directly as a thermal fluid for thermal applications. So, that means we can use this technology for generation of thermal energy as well as electrical energy if we couple to a Rankine cycle right and this is the picture of the installation, but it has got one limitation about this thermal oil because the fluid used as a heat transfer fluid is not water. Here fluid is thermal oil and it degrades at higher temperature. So, that is that is one limitation ok. So, this technology can be applied in many of the processes may be food industry, may be petrochemical industry or may be any other industry which requires you no know, steam at certain condition. Now, let us study the parabolic trough collector technology. So, we have to assume something like radiation flux is same along the length and temperature drop across the observer tube and glass cover are neglected. So, this is the technology if we cut a section it looks something like this. In the last slide I was describing about rim angle it is nothing but if we join the center of the tube and the edge of the concentrator and then draw a vertical line the angle which is formed is nothing but rim angle right and this w is nothing but aperture of the concentrator and if we see this tube is something like this. So, maybe we can consider this is the length of the tube right. So, here one indicate observer tube and two indicate glass cover ok and observer inner diameter is d i it has got something like this it has got thickness and then fluid is there then we will have this kind of things. This is inner diameter this is outer diameter of the tube and then we will have inner diameter of the glass and outer diameter of the glass. So, that is how we have DCI is the inner diameter of the glass cover and DCO is the outer diameter of the glass cover right and then mass flow rate is m dot. So, if we consider suppose this is the starting or inlet of the fluid and this may be x and fluid is flowing and we are considering a section d x. So, if we are interested to write the energy balance at this section then how we will calculate the values of rate of heat transfer and other parameters considering inlet fluid temperature is T f i and outlet fluid temperature is T f o. Let us move ahead for an energy balance on the element d x of the observer tube which is located at a distance x from the inlet ok. So, under steady state condition we can write down the expression something like this d q u which is nothing but the useful heat gain rate for a length 
delta x. So, we will have 3 component, component 1, component 2 and component 3. Since component 1 is nothing but the incident beam radiation absorbed in the absorber tube after reflection, right. So, solar radiation is falling here and then it is coming here, okay. And then second component is the absorbed incident beam radiation which falls directly on the absorber tube because this absorber tube is also exposed. So, solar radiation can fall on the absorber tube as well, right. And the last component is the loss by convection and re-radiation, right. Now, if we are interested to write down the absorbed solar flux, then its expression will be something like this. This is the amount of you no know, radiation which is absorbed in the absorber plate, right. So, these are the radiation component and we will have Rb is the tilt factor for the beam radiation and rho is the specular reflectivity of the concentrating surfaces and gamma is the intercept factor. It is defined as the fraction of the reflected radiation intercepted by the absorber tube and this tau alpha average is nothing but the average value of the transmissivity absorptivity product for beam radiation, right. So, if we use this equation B which is the solar flux absorbed in equation A, then our expression will be modified to something like this. Now, we can introduce this concentration ratio. Also, we know the useful heat gain rate is something like dQU is equal to HF pi di multiplied by Tp minus Tf into dx. Okay? And also, we know if we know the mass flow rate of the fluid and then Cp of the fluid and then temperature difference, say maybe T1, T2, then we can write the heat transfer is MCP dt. Okay? So, here it is dtf, it is a fluid temperature and m that is the mass flow rate of the thermic fluid. Then if we combine these two expressions C and D, we can have this expression right? and we can calculate the collector efficiency factor. So, how do we define collector efficiency factor? So, we have this, it is something like the rate of useful energy transferred to the water water mass maybe and the rate at which it is received by the absorber. Okay. So, this is nothing but collector efficiency factor and again if we use E and F then our expression will be something like this and also we need to consider some of the initial conditions like at x is equal to 0, T f is equal to T f i okay? and then if we integrate then our expression will be something like this. Okay? This is the temperature distribution of course, this is m C p, this part is m into C p. So, fluid temperature is obtained by putting T f is equal to T f i and x is equal to L, then our expression will be something like this. So, this part may be read as m into C p m dot and useful heat gain also we can calculate this is the expression. Also, we can include f r 
what is F R? F R is the collector heat removal factor. This is collector heat removal factor. So, how it is defined is the actual heat transfer to the maximum possible heat transfer through the collector I can say collector plate ok. So, this part is M C P. So, everywhere we have to read it like M into C P ok M into C P M dot Okay. So, finally, we can find out the instantaneous collector efficiency which is nothing but useful heat gain to the amount of radiation falling on the receiver. Right? So, this is something like QU by I B R B plus I D R D multiplied by W into L. So, if this component is neglected because this component is coming from the reflected radiation from the ground. So, expression will be something like Q u by I b r b multiplied by w into L right. So, this is how we can calculate the instantaneous efficiency of a parabolic trough. Now, let us learn how this heat transfer coefficient are calculated. So, we need to concern about losses because without calculating the losses we cannot estimate really the amount of heat we will get from the system right. So, this component is calculated by using this expression and in order to calculate the heat transfer coefficient we need to rely on the correlations developed by the researchers. So, we need to select the appropriate correlations for calculation of heat transfer coefficient. So, if we need to find out the heat transfer coefficient between the absorber tube and the cover, then we will have to use these correlations, right. These are the expressions, and if we need to find out the heat transfer coefficient on the outside surface of the cover, then we need to check what is the Reynolds number if the Reynolds number in between 40 and 4000, then these values are to be considered and then we can find out the values of heat transfer coefficient because Nusselt number is nothing but H L by K. Okay. And one more correlations we will have if the Reynolds number is up to 10 to the power of 7, then we can use this correlation which is proposed by this famous researcher. And also we can opt for this kind of correlations based on the situation. Once we complete this heat transfer part, we might be interested to find out what will be the pressure drop. That can also be find out by using appropriate correlations developed by various researchers ok. So, this is the this is one of the correlations which is normally used for estimation of pressure drop coined by Date and Singham. Now, let us see like if we are concerned about medium temperature power plant, then what could be the process and what are the components required. So, what we need like 
parabolic trough okay and then we need to store it so we need some kind of storage system and we need heat exchanger right heat exchanger because this has to be connected to a turbine and then we will have condenser then we will have a pump and then this will work in a cycle. So, here working fluid is water or steam okay? and here we can connect something like this. This is storage and this is parabolic trough maybe and this is the turbine turbine WT and if we connect the generator then we can produce electricity and of course we need to have some kind of cooling mechanism in the condenser okay so here is the thermic fluid So, if it is like 380 degrees Celsius, it may store. So, this will be something like this or something like this sometime. It goes, heat exchange will be there and then water will be circulated. So, when heat exchange is there, then high pressure steam will be generated. Then steam will be expanded in the turbine and then WT will be generated turbine work right and then exit of the turbine has to be cooled by using a condenser and then we need to pump the water again. So, we need to spend some kind of work right. So, this is how a medium temperature solar power plant works. Here we are generating steam by using solar technology. Sometimes if we do not want electricity, we can also take the heated fluid from here and use it for thermal application. Right? So, here we can very easily find out the Carnot cycle efficiency. If this temperature is say close to 310 or 320 degree C and here may be 60 degree C, then we can find out very easily what will be the Carnot cycle efficiency. This is 60 plus 273 and then 310 plus 273. Okay. This is a very basic scheme for power generation through medium temperature solar technology. Here parabolic trough is used. So, this is a very complicated figure in my opinion because here we have couple many system. So, this will be the future of this kind of technology. So, here as you can see we have option A, option B. Option A is high pressure solar steam and option B is low pressure solar steam. So, here these are parabolic trough okay? and we have solar steam generator here. Okay? Feed water comes here and then solar steam will be generated and this will be transferred to the waste heat recovery boiler or system. Okay? So, this high pressure will move to the high pressure turbine HT turbine and then we will have steam which goes to low pressure turbine. Okay? So, this can be operated and then this system can also be connected with this gas turbine power plant. So, in a gas turbine power plant 
we need to have compressor, then turbine and this is fuel, right. So, we can use the exit of the turbine in this system as well. And here, these are the parabolic trough and we can generate solar steam and we can run this low temperature, low pressure uh, steam turbine and we can generate electricity. And then exit of the steam has to be cooled and it has to be pumped back to the circuit and all, of course, we need deaerator because sometimes in water we will have dissolved gases and oxygen which are not required. This has to be cleaned before injecting to the boiler or waste recovery system. It is a very complex system and we can couple this system as a integrated solar combined cycle parabolic trough power plant. Okay. So, here we are connecting parabolic trough plant and then Rankine cycle. Also, we have ZT power plant. Right? So, these are the photographs of the installation of parabolic trough power plant which are basically used for low temperature power plant which are basically used for electricity generation under medium temperature category. So, this plant is at India and this plant is in USA. We will have one more parabolic concentrating collector which is known as compound parabolic concentrating collectors. It comprised of two parabolic mirrors this kind with different focal points. The focal point of one that means first parabola lies in the second parabola and focal point of second parabola lies on the first parabola. And most importantly since it has got wide acceptance and globe reflectors, it eliminates the need of the sun tracker. These rays are coming and it is internally reflected and it is absorbed in the bottom of the plate where absorber system is connected. This absorber or receiver carries the fluid to the header and then finally, it is stored and it is used as per the requirement. And this class of collector includes parabolic trough, flat plate collector, flat plate collector with parabolic boosting reflectors and solar cookers. So, this technology is quite good as far as community cooking is concerned, right. Here is the receiver and fluid flows through the receiver and then there are series of this kind of technology and these are connected to a header and finally, these are stored in a primary reservoir and from where you know, this can be distributed or used. Let us now discuss the second categories of concentric or concentric solar technology called Fresnel collectors. So, characteristics of this technology includes its operating temperature ranges up to 400 degrees Celsius and it is a line focusing type. So, only single axis tracking is possible and receiver is linear and it has flat or curve concentric mirrors as you can see here and thermal oil and molten salt or sometimes pressurized water is used as heat transfer fluid. And this is not yet commercialized, however, it has got storage ability. So, these are the curved mirrors and is reflected and this is the receiver through which heat transfer fluid like thermal oil, molten salt or maybe pressurized water flows. So, this is an optical device for concentrating light that is made of concentric rings that are 
faced at different angles so that light falling on any ring is focused to the same point okay and it has collectors these are fresnel lens or mirrors here and uh, receivers like secondary concentrator or absorber tubes and tracking mechanism is there as a singular axis tracking you can move something like this based on the position of the sun and we need to have steam drum to store the steam. So, this is something like this like uh, it is a working principle of linear fresnel collector technology. So, these are the linear fresnel reflectors solar radiation is falling and is reflected back to the absorber once it is heated up then you can store it or you can exchange the heat with the water and then water will be converted to steam that is a high pressure steam which will be expanded in the turbine and then we can produce mechanical work and if you connect to a alternator we can produce electricity and the exit of the turbine has to be cooled by using a condenser and then finally, this water has to be pumped and it will work in a cycle ok. And this cold salt or pressurized water may be stored and it can be you no know, routed through this absorber in a closed system. So, this part is for solar field, middle part is for thermal energy storage and last part is for power block where power is generated. So, third concentric solar technology is central tower and this technology is basically used for generation of high temperature in the range of 600 to 800 degree Celsius. It is a point focusing system that means, it has got two axis tracking in order to have intense heat and it has got flat concentric mirrors and primarily molten salt is used as working fluid. It has got heat storage capability and high thermodynamic efficiency because each operating temperature is higher and we use Rankine cycle for generation of electricity and it has proved its maturity and now it is used in many of the countries because it is a proven technology. So, these are the heliostates this can be regulated by computer and sensors. Solar radiation falls here based on the movement of the sun this will be tracked and it will be focused to the receiver and where hot molten salt will be heated up and it will come down where heat exchange will be there and finally, we can have electricity by using Rankine cycle. So, that means, it uses field of mirrors to reflect sun's radiation to the top of the tower which is like a milk it is very white and bright. A heliostate uses a field of dual axis sun tracker that is why it is a point tracking system that direct sun energy or solar energy to a large absorber located on a tower. This heliostate fields this accounts for around 40 to 50 percent of the solar power tower plan cost and can be responsible for up to 40 percent of energy losses. So, these are the key things where you can think of how we can increase the efficiency of the system. This molten salt remains heat efficiently. So, it is used to store heat for longer time. So, as you can see these are the power plant 
okay, all the Rankine cycle is here, it is a very weak plant. This uh, heliostates are large numbers of plane mirrors mounted on a two dimensional shaft to track the position of the sun. A very high temperature can be achieved using superheated steam, oil or molten salt as the working fluid. And this working fluid drives a standard Rankine cycle steam turbine to generate electrical power, right. And this tower has the ability to accept large and variable heat flux in the range from 100 to 1000 kilowatt per meter square, which results in high temperature, high thermal gradient and high stress. Okay. So, rate of cooling is very, very important at higher heat flux. Right. So, this one heliostate can hold many more mirrors. You can see here, this is a support and you can see many more mirrors are installed in a single heliostate. So, it is a very big structure right? and this is the schematic of the tower and the reflectivity of heliostase is in the range of 0.903 and due to dart and all, it reduces its reflectivity about 0.82. So, it is very, very important to clean the surfaces time to time. Otherwise, if its reflectivity reduces means we are losing its efficiency. So, this looks something like this. Its solar radiation comes here and it reflects to this receiver system okay. and this working fluid goes there and hot fluids come out and then we can store it here and when electricity is to be generated then we need to exchange the heat with the heat carried by the hot salt tank and then we can generate steam and then we can have the same Rankine cycle to produce electricity. So, this part is solar field, then we have thermal energy storage, then power blocks. Right? So, this is the schematic for a central tower solar power plant, which is basically called high temperature solar power generating unit. So, we can one more times you can see like up to what temperature we can generate. So, it is about 565, then it comes to hot salt storage, then steam generator, then we have condenser, turbine, then electricity right? and cold salt again it is pumped to the top of the tower that is receiver and helios that is here. Okay. This is just then schematic to represent how a solar power system when connected to a Rankine cycle works. This is a photograph of a plant where energy generation from central tower solar power plant is carried out. So, let us discuss the last technology, we have parabolic disc. So, characteristics of this technology is something like it operates a temperature range from 700 to 800 degrees Celsius. It is a point focus system that means it has got two axis tracking and it uses disc concentrators as you can see it is a disc and this is the focal point and this is the receiver at the same location. So, we will have this engine. So, this engine is nothing but external combustion engine, external combustion engine. Okay. And single unit can generate up to 25 kilowatt and it has got high efficiency because its operating temperature is higher 
and in this case heat storage is a difficult process and uh, this is not yet commercialized. It has uh, some of the issues which has to be resolved before it comes to the market for power generation. So, a parabolic disk collector is similar in appearance to a large satellite disk, but has mirror like reflectors and an absorber at the focal point. This is the absorber and it has got two axis tracking as we have discussed before. So, this is parabolic disk reflector and these are the supporting structures okay. and computer controlled tracking is available here because as per the sun movements we need to track it we need only beam radiation. And this is the photographs of this technology you can see here this is the receiver where external combustion engine is attached for power generation. We will discuss the details of this engine and cycles in the next class. So, it installs something like this. So, we have got heat engine here and we have this collector pillars then this is the fluid through which heated element goes. Okay. So, it uses computer to track the sun and concentrate the sun's ray on the receiver located at its focal point. Okay. So, this is not the only one unit, it has got many units which can be connected and we can produce electricity. Here what you can see is the working of this Stirling engine and this engine is coupled with this parabolic disk system. So, what happens here this receiver in the earlier slides is integrated into high efficiency external combustion engine. So, this is the engine uh, it may be alpha type or may be beta type. So, here this fluid what you can see it may be hydrogen or helium. So, when this concentrated sunlight falls on the receiver it hits the gas in the tube okay? it hits the gas in the tube to very high temperature which causes hot gas to expand inside the cylinder. Okay. The expanding gas drives the piston this piston what you can see here okay. once it is heated up it is expanded and then it drives this piston and this piston turns a crankshaft. And then this is connected to electric generator, and then we can have electricity. Okay, so the cycles and its associated pneumatic examples will be solved in the next class to understand the facts clearly. Now let us compare those technologies, like we have parabolic trow linear fresnel reflectors, central tower and parabolic disk. So, now first comparison is like whether storage integration is possible, possible for first three, but it is difficult for parabolic disk. What are advantages of parabolic trow? It is relatively low cost of installation large experimental feedback and disadvantage is relatively large area is occupied. And since its operating temperature is not much that is how its thermodynamic efficiency is lower compared to central tower or parabolic disk system. Right? 
So, solar central tower system has got very good high, very good thermodynamic efficiency due to its high operating temperature. But it has got disadvantages like large space area is occupied and relatively high installation cost and high heat losses. For linear Fresnel reflectors, installation cost is low, but low thermodynamic efficiency because of its low operating temperature. Right? But in case of parabolic disc, it is relatively high installation cost and it has little experimental feedback. Hence, this technology cannot be applied without doing more experimental exercise on it. So, there are some technologies which are installed across the globe. Most of the cases parabolic trow and solar tower has been seen. In Dubai, they have installed power of 517 megawatt and mostly it includes parabolic trow and solar tower. And in Morocco, same configurations, their capacity is 510 and solar power tower in California, they have installed 392 solar tower in USA, Spain and in India also, they have two units of capacity 50 megawatt in Rajasthan and Anandpur. So, these are the photograph of some of the installations. Here, this is the installation of two units. This is parabolic trow part and this is the central power tower and this part and this is in Dubai, UAE and you can see the installation is in California, USA to three central solar power tower has been installed together and this installation is in Morocco of capacity 510 megawatt and this is Fresnel reflectors, its capacity is 125 megawatt in India, Jai Shalmar is the location. So, let us compare these technologies like sizes if we need up to 320 megawatt, we can go for parabolic trough, central tower 10 to 200 megawatt, then parabolic disk 5 to 25 megawatt, then already we know the operating temperatures then efficiency is like in case of parabolic trow 20 percent is the efficiency, then central tower system is 23 percent and the parabolic disk is about 30 percent. And uh, you can see the stories where it is possible and what kind of technology can be applied and uh, hybrid design is it possible, yes for all. So, these are some of the important comparisons. Uh, apart from what we have discussed in the other aspects. So, let us summarize what we have discussed today is primarily functioning and working principle of different concentrating collectors, then classifications of concentrating collectors like medium temperature and high temperature and then what are the technologies are used for medium temperature applications and high temperature applications. And finally, we have compared the technologies. So, I hope you got an information about this concentration or concentric thermal power system. At next class, we will be solving few mathematical or numerical problems to strengthen the understanding. So, thank you very much for watching this video. So, these are the references we have used while preparing this lecture. Thank you.